Hi, so I'm going to show you how to install MySQL, and this is going to give us the ability to install, install MySQL and a whole host of different products that come along with that installation. So what I want you to do is Google MySQL installer, and then you're going to download that. We are going to be presented with this window. You have two options. We don't want to download the first option, which is Web Community Installer. What we want to do is get the full application, and this will give us the ability to have quite a lot of um, functionality through the workbench and a GUI and a lot of things that allow us to interact with SQL. So you can see that it's a hefty download, so it's going to take a minute. But once that's done, what we're going to do is configure our setup. So once that installer initiates, when you click the downloaded package, we're going to be presented with a couple options for us to choose between the type of application uh, setup we want. We're going to use the developer setup, which is the easiest and the most recommended. You can use a full if you want or server only, but developer is the best one that you can choose. It's going to give you all of these particular applications that you see here. And the most important one is uh, Workbench, which is going to be iGUI, but all these things can be required to run the application correctly. So you can see on the progress board bar which of the individual elements are going to be loaded. I'm speeding this up a little bit, so it might take longer for yours to actually run. It's a, like I said, it's a big application, so make sure you have enough disk space and you can fit it on your drive. So once that's finished downloading, click next. You can see all the products we're going to have to configure within the application. So we're going to start with the server. So we're going to look at the type and networking, and this is a server configuration. So what we need to make sure is that this is our um, development computer. We're using TCP IP. We're using port 3306. Uh, and that is all you really need to worry about in this particular section. There's not a lot that you need to change. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change any of the particular um, features here, I would just leave them default and move on to the next part. Now you're going to look at the authentication method and we want to make sure we use a strong password. So you're just going to click that option where it says recommended and go to next. So now you need to set your password for your root account. So the root account is going to be the base account that you have. If I were you, I would set a strong password, and you can see that it'll give you an indication whether your password is weak or not, but I would recommend you put a strong one there. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's just you accessing this, but you can just play around with the password types until you get something that is uh, strong, and it'll indicate that in the little section below the passwords where you see password strength. We've added our root um, user, but we can also add another user to this by using add user. So just in case you wanted to have someone else working on this system, you can use the add user to easily create new profiles and also add the authentication method. So all you're going to do is you're going to click into add user and then you're going to give a username. So I'm going to use the username AbsentData. And then I'm going to need to set another strong password. Something alpha numeric is good. You can also set the different roles for the particular user. As you see, it's by default is a database admin. So we just can click OK or you can explore the different roles. But we just want to keep it um, by database admin. Once we have that, you can see that that role is created and we can click to next. Now we're going to configure MySQL as a Windows service. This is pretty standard. You don't really need to mess with anything, so click next. Also, the server permission files. Yes, we want to grant full access to users running in the Windows service, so we click next on that. And now what you're going to see is what we're going to execute and apply the configuration that we put together. So this also may take a little bit of time, and you can see that each one of those lines are initiated. And now we are finished with that particular configuration, and you can see that um, we have finished the MySQL server configuration. 
Now we're going to do the router configuration. Um, this is also pretty standard. I don't think you need to click the Bootstrap MySQL router for use. You can just leave pretty much everything default and click finish. Now you can see that configuration was not needed on that one. So we click next and we go into the last part. So you can see we have the root directory here and you remember the password that you use. You're going to have to write that password again. And this is going to allow us to connect to the server. This is going to allow us to check the connection to make sure that we have the right setup and you can see connection succeeded in the root uh, domain. Now what you can do, you can also go back and you can check the DB admin that you created. So the other configuration for the user and check to see if that connection is also functional. So we have put in our password and we can see connection succeeded. So we now we can move on to the next part which is going to allow us to apply the configuration. So we're just executing everything. And now we are finished with that particular configura configuration. So we can click finish. And now you can see we have completed all the configuration of those applications. And now we have the option to copy the logs, but now we can just execute everything. And this is going to open up two things. It's going to open up MySQL shell, which you see here. And then it's going to also open up your MySQL workbench. And as you see, you are presented with a local connection there where it's at root. And that is your root connection. So that was the default connection that you had. You can also look at adding the user or the connection type. So remember, we created another connection type. So all, if you clicked into that one, that would just allow you to connect with the root um, account. So if we cancel that and we click the plus button here, we can go back and add the connection that we created, which was the user apps and data for me. So if you go up to the top window, so at this window, we're able to name the connection that we want to name. You can name the connection anything you like. And we're going to pass in the database admin credentials that we created for this connection. So I'm calling it apps and data, which is the same as my username. I pass in my username. And then at this point, if you want to test the connection, you click and you have to put in your password. You can store this password to the vault if you want but I'm just going to test the connection. We should get a window that shows us that the connection is set and you can see that the configuration is there. So we are good to go. So we can just click OK and, and click out of this. And then now we can choose the connection that we're looking for. So I'm going to choose the database admin connection and if you click into that, then you're presented with this window. So now we are in, in the MySQL workbench and this gives us access to the databases that we have. There are sample databases in here and you can see those to the top left that we can interact with. So if I click world, you can see that there's a world and I can select the table within that database. And if we select the first um, option that gives us a sample rows, you can see that it generates the first thousand rows and there is the table that is listed under it. Now you can configure this setup so it, you know, for font size and things like that. And I like a big font size, so that's why you see it there. But you can look into the options for that. So on the left side, you have all your databases. I'm going to show you how to create a database in a few different ways and how to actually access this within the system here. So at the top of the application, you can see there is an option to add SQL with the plus sign there. So what we're going to do is we're going to be clicking that and that is going to open up a new window because we're currently in the window that you see highlighted here called city. So once you click that, you should be able to open up a new window. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the create database 
command, and we're going to create a database called video game. So the syntax is create database, and then the name video games, and that will allow us to create a database. Next, what we want to do is use the command use that particular database. And now that means we have access to that particular database and we can run that and you can see in the bottom that we can see that that has been run. Next we want to create a table. So we use the create table command and then we are going to be using parentheses and what we're going to pass into this table is one we need to pass in a name but let's just pass in the particular information that we want. So first I'm going to add in the column that I'm looking for in the data type. So I'm adding in a column to this table called var, uh, title and we're using a uh, variable character for text and I'm going to use scores for the next column in the table and I'm just going to make that an integer but I have to give this table a name before I end the command. So where you have create table there we need to pass in a name now this is a video game database so I think maybe we can call this scores and now we can go up to the top highlight that particular command click the run which is a lightning bolt and you can see in the bottom there that that has run su successfully so now we can select from that table and see the data that we have in and we shouldn't have anything in there because we haven't passed anything there so we just have the column name so let's insert some values into that table so we're going to use insert into the table name scores we're going to use the parentheses again so we're going to insert into title and scores which is our two columns that we have and now we're going to add our rows or our values in there so here are we're going to use the values function and we only need to use that once and now we can pass in the game name. So I'm going to use GTA for the title, GTA 5, and let's give that a score of a 9. And next I want to pass in another value. So how about the Witcher 3? And let's pass in a score for that. And you can see that that tuple lines up with the two columns. So those values should be easily placed into our table. So we're going to highlight our command here and make sure it runs. Go up to the lightning bolt. And you can see that it's all green there. And now we can select from that table and see the values that we have. So now we've created a database and we have values there. And that's just one way you can create a database. But of course, we can upload data into this also. So that's going to be the next thing we do. We're going to use a CSV with, uh, with some information. And I'll show you how to upload that into a particular database within MySQL. So I want you to navigate over to the left side where you see your databases loaded and what we're going to do is just right click one of them and you're going to go down to create schema and schema is a way to call a database and what we're going to do here is give our database a name and I'm going to call my database video games so video games underscore and you can see that we have that there and I'm going to hit apply and you can see that name conflicts because we already have one called video games so we need to pass in a different type of naming. So let's call this video games full because this is where we're going to enter all our information. And you can see it checked and it passes our inspection. And now we can apply that and it will create the schema. And you can see it's done there. We go to finish. So once we pass inspections, we can click over to video games full. We can go down to the section here, table data import wizard. And then we choose a particular file that we want uploaded. In this one, I'm going to use a video games file also. And this is going to be in a CSV format. So once we have that, we click it into click into that. 
And then you can see that we have our new table name and it's called video game sales. We click that, we get a preview of the particular data and the data types there and the table format. This looks pretty good, so I don't see anything I need to change. You can see the encoding, which is UTF-8. I'm clicking next and next again because I don't need to change any of this. And now you're going to be presented with this option where it shows you the process of the data import. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to worry about it. So once that's imported, you'll be presented. And what we can do now, we have our data import in. We're going to click Next. And you can see that the records have been installed. And now what we're going to do is we can select from that particular uh, database. So I'm going to create a new sheet here, a new window. And then we're going to use that database by using the Use Video Games full database and we're going to end that with a semicolon if you don't remember the table name you can use show tables within that database so i'm going to run these and then show tables and now you can see it's called video game sales so we can just use a select command And now we can run that and we can see our data there. If you found this useful, please share it, like, and subscribe. And I hope that helped you. Thank you.